There's a type of skirt that's super classic. You've seen it in shops for decades. I've been making it since the 90s. Fitted waist, fitted hips, but then it flares out at the hem. Eight panels or eight gauze. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and I'm excited to share a skirt. I'm a huge skirt wearer, and the design I have to share with you today is a really classic one. I've been making this style of skirt since the early 90s. I remember making some for myself and for my mum. Back then I used to wear my skirts and I had a few styles like this that were all the way down to the floor. Then I saw a pattern called Florence and it's a skirt from Sinclair Patterns and it's got the same classic eight gore style. You know when you have these gauze, they're shaped at the waist, so the waist is going to be fitted and down to the hips. And then each of these starts flaring out a little like this towards the hem. And that gives you the best of both worlds because you get a fitted waist and hips, but you get all that flowiness and a little bit of volume there at the hem. The only way to do that is with having a lot of seams. If you just had a front and a back, you can't really customize to curves and getting that fitted look at the hip while keeping that flowiness at the bottom. When you have eight pieces, then it's really good. <laughs> You can see on the line out there all the seams for the front you have four pieces for the back you have another four pieces and you have options there you can do a button placket on the center front or you can just sew two front pieces and not have a button placket if you're not doing the one with the buttons that you have to get in somehow so you put a zipper on one of the hips they're finished with a waistband on the top and you have two hems they're both longish, at least for what I prefer. One is below the knee, and then the other one would hit sort of the mid calf. So those are the original lengths, but you know that can always be tweaked. <laughs> This is for woven fabrics. I think medium weight fabrics that have drape are gonna look the best. I would be sort of wary about making it in something too light unless I knew I was gonna wear a sleep or I was gonna make a lining for it, which I don't think I would want to do with so many pattern pieces. <laughs> so I think the best, best ones are the medium weight fabrics with some drape. And there you're gonna find like rayon twill, tensile twill, rayon with a linen blend, maybe some crepe suiting, some wool suiting. Just hold it and move it and see if it's gonna drape nicely. And if it does, it's gonna work well. Fabrics I would not be too keen to sew with, although I have seen these types of skirts made like this, is denim. I think denim is too heavy and it's too stiff. And although it's fitted at the waist and hips, the flary out bit will just sort of stick out further away from the body. Same as 100% linen. I don't think I would wanna make this in 100% percent linen I do love linen but I would want it to have some rayon in the blend so that it would give you a bit more of a softer look as an asterisk you can make this with a medium weight fabric that is a knit that also has some drape the pattern does recommend you size down one size at least you don't want all that extra ease at the hips with a fitted knit skirt that's what I would do <laughs> one size less I wouldn't want to make this in something too light like a rayon spandex I would stay with double brush poly or an athletic knit maybe a stretch velvet I think would be really good but then you'd have to be careful about cutting all these pieces in the same direction in this case you could do the button placket if you wanted you could use trick or knee interfacing but if you just wanted a pull-up skirt then you wouldn't need a zipper to get in you could just pull it up because it all stretches so I think that's a really easy option as well if you like the style I've chosen an amazing tensile twill in an amazing color all the tensile twill I'd found in the past was sort of denim looking bluish in a grayish tones but recently I found a place that sold burgundy and green I'm just holding onto these fabrics because they're so pretty and I chose the burgundy one for this opportunity. I also chose a really cool athletic knit from my stash to make a neat version. Super easy, much easier and faster than doing the woven one and I wanted the two options. Also so you could see how they might look a little different, Sinclair Patterns is running a year-long sale event that has to do with the alphabet. It's called ABC and so every month there's two letters that all the patterns that begin with that letter are on sale. So for March it was E and F so all the patterns that start with an E and with an F are 20% off through the whole March. That's why Florence has been on sale for 20% off. The sale still runs through Friday the 31st of March. If you would like to get this pattern for yourself, I'll leave you my affiliate link down below. If you want to purchase your pattern, I do receive a small commission back and that supports the work that I do here. This is an older pattern from Sinclair, so the sizing doesn't go up to 30 like the newer patterns. It goes from zero to 22 US. That goes up to a 53 and a half inch hip. It's fitted at the waist, so it's that it's got one centimeter or three eighths of an inch ease at the waist
waistband so it's a fitted waistband which is usually how these waistbands are <laughs> at the hips you have a little bit of ease about one and five eighths of an inch four centimeters so you do have a little bit more space there and then below that it'll flare I chose a straight size 16 for mine and the only fitting adjustment I wanted to do was actually just shorten the skirt as you know Sinclair patterns has petite regular and tall height files that's what you choose first now I usually sew a tall file for pants for dresses whatever but in this case I knew that because I wanted my skirt shorter I thought the regular height file was going to be okay I believe that goes up to five foot six I'm two inches taller the distance between my waist and my hips is pretty standard and I looked at that regular height file and it was okay for me and I wanted to keep the original flare of the skirt so I didn't want to just cut the pattern pieces short from the hem up that would just get rid of all that flare at the hem and it would just ruin the whole look so I chose the shorter length cut line there I drew a line and then drew another one two inches because that's the amount I wanted shortened cut it scoot the pattern piece up blend the lines out so that they make sense and then I had four new pattern pieces that were just a little shorter but were still keeping the original width and the flare of the hem only this time sort of above the knee and not below the knee because I really wanted mine a little shorter so it's not a fitting adjustment it's just a length adjustment personal preference personal styling and what I feel more comfortable in it's not that the skirt wasn't going to fit if I didn't shorten it you know what I mean I have filmed sewing for you as usual in the up close and sew personal segment you'll see details about cutting interfacing putting it all together it's a really fun make as I mentioned I chose the version with the button packet so let's see the fun sewing and then I'll be back to show you the skirts This is a tensile twill and I can't really put the pattern pieces in different directions. The way the light shines on it is going to make that noticeable. So I'm treating this as if it were like a directional print or had an app. It doesn't, but it will make a difference if I put one upside down. So you can see they're all facing in the same direction. This is the waist area. That's the hip area right there. As with any design, it's really important to keep the grain line. So the grain line mark is only short. I did extend it and you can see it there in green. And it's really important to measure. So I basically measure from the bottom of this line over to the selvage and then measure up here as well make sure I have the exact same amount same as on this piece over there I took my time to place these really really accurately so that they hang as they should I think with these designs you can really tell if you place the grain line slightly off so I take my time to do this I'm doing the version that has the button placket like you can see there so there's this extension here in the center front I've folded it so you can see so from that line to that line you're meant to interface that strip down but I actually prefer to just interface the whole thing I'm gonna block fuse as well because I don't want my piece shrinking vertically when I put interfacing on so I've cut my piece on the side but I've left a little excess on the top and the bottom that line that you see on the pattern I've actually drawn it here on my fabric on both sides so I'm just gonna cut a piece of interfacing interface the whole thing this section and then put my pattern piece on top and then just trim the excess there trim the excess I've left at the bottom and the top and I'm going to get a super nice exact center front piece. Here is that area interfaced. I interfaced a wider area as you can see. And now I can trim off this excess I'd left here at the bottom. And then trim this side off as well. Here are the pattern pieces for the florins. And I've got the back pieces over here and the front pieces over there. With this version it's easy to see that this is going to be the center front of the skirt. So this is the center front piece. The side front, the side back and the center back. And over there you can see the waistband that's interfaced. The waistband also was meant to just be interfaced half of it. But my fabric is fairly lightweight and I just decided to interface the whole thing. All of these have different types of marks on the side so that's going to help you join them. In this area you have two little marks that are going to match the two little marks there and one down at the bottom. On this section you're just going to have one mark right there and on this one you're going to have two little marks right close together here and then one at the bottom. So if you follow the little marks you're never going to make the mistake of joining the wrong pieces together. It's always helpful to mark them with chalk or some, some sort of way so that you don't get confused. When I have them all set up on the table nice and neat or next to each other how they're going to be sewn, I just like to pin the ones that are going to go together. One pin is enough. So here at the center back, I'm just going to put a pin because that's going to be sewn together. And then I'm going to get these two and pin them together right here. And it's just to keep them together. They don't have to match perfectly. And then over here as well, I'm going to match these up. So I basically have my back pieces all matched up. I don't need to think about it. I can just take them to the table, 
they match and then I can pin them properly and sew them. With these two front pieces I'm not going to join them right now because first I'm going to deal with the center front placket that's going to have buttonholes and buttons. I want to press it, I want to do the first steps with that. Once I have that done then I'm going to sew these two together right there. The top of all these pieces where the waist is going to be they are all curved, they're not straight, they're not rectangles on the top so it's always a good idea to stay stitch this because we're going to be handling a lot of these pieces so stay stitching is going to prevent these from stretching out and they're going to fit your waistband later. So I'm just going to use a regular stitch length and sew within the seam allowance. I'll be doing this with the top of every single piece at the waist area. I'm doing a guide stitch to prepare the first fold of this button placket and it's at 5 eighths of an inch. I'm just using a long stitch length. I'll do it for the both center fronts. Then I'll head over to the iron and press this first fold and then the second fold. This is the placket folded to the wrong side first by 5 eighths and then the second fold is where the interfacing is. In essence you could top stitch this now but what I don't like about that is that you finish all the way to the hem and then when you want to do the hem it gets folded up like that and it's really bulky so I would rather leave the top stitching for later stages so that I can finish the hem and this in one go. So at this point I'm just going to hand baste it and just keep hand basted. You don't have to do it now so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to baste it and leave it there for later. I've got all the pieces pinned together. I just find it easier to do it like this just sit down relax and pin and then just do a whole bunch of straight seams there are seven of them one two three four five six seven they do have a little bit of a curve they do have a little bit of a shape and the seam allowance is five eighths of an inch so i'm just gonna go ahead and sew all of them As I serge these edges, I'm trimming away a little bit. I think it's a lot to leave 5 eighths in there. So I think that amount looks really nice. Now some of the seams, I have not serged them together. Like the side seams here, these I serged them before sewing. So these are going to be pressed open and the same goes for the center back seam. I think these will look better pressed open. After serging all the seams, I cleaned off the bottom. So I'm ready to do the hem. And I had hand basted this, but just partially I knew I was going to deal with it now. So I'm just going to do an easy way, which is basically folding this placket back out to the right side. So right sides together here. I have already a memory crease that I can use. And the hem allowance is one inch. So I'm going to sew this short little section using a one inch seam allowance. And then when we flip it, it's going to be all neat. So that's the seam. I am going to trim some of this away. I'm not going to leave all the bulk. But when you flip this, the placket at the bottom is going to be nice and neat and the hem is going to come from within so of course I don't want to leave all that I'm going to probably just going to leave about three eighths of that in there and just make sure nothing is on view I'm going to do the top stitching all in one go and that will include the hem and this area What you can see here is the waistband. Now I took one of the long ends, it doesn't matter which one, and I already folded it up. To do that neatly, I did a guide stitch. So that's why you see it's pressed up so neatly instead of just eyeballing that at the iron. And I'm gonna sew this on the reverse. This is the wrong side of my skirt. So I've got my waistband right side to wrong side and I've pinned it all the way along. Remember, I had stay stitched all these pieces of the waist here on the top. So that prevents them from turning out longer than what you want. When you look at both ends, you can have seam allowance protruding there and that's gonna allow us to finish the waistband on the centers. But first, it's just a really long seam, nothing really complex or interesting right there the waistband is on now what i'm going to do to these centers is just fold these right sides together here this is the wrong side of the skirt by the way and keeping these two folds the one that's formed right there and the one that we had already pressed what i don't want to do is match them up exactly i want the one that i had pressed previously to be over it a little bit and that will ensure that when we flip this this fold that was pre-pressed is going to cover the seam and now all we need to do is that tiny little seam and then we can flip the waistband okay here's the little seam i'm going to take some seam allowance out of course now we flip it and now this is when the waistband is coming over towards the right side of the skirt now i'm going to repeat the same on this other side of the waistband band right over there and then just make sure this fold that was already pressed is going to cover that seam that united the waistband to the waist super easy 
waistband on the reverse you don't need to worry about catching anything here because this is, has already been sewn on and press hand based and then top stitch and that'll be it this is my woven florence skirts it's so pretty i love this tensile you can see it's got a slight sheen up close you can see the twill type of weave and I was really careful to cut it as a directional print because I placed the fabric to the other side and look there was definitely a difference so yeah it would have been noticeable if any of these panels were the other way around <laughs> so I'm glad I thought about that here is the button placket super easy to sew because it's on the same piece it's not a separate piece so it's integrated to the center front just fold it back interface right there look at these buttons I found in my collection they're so pretty they would but they've got that dark maroon color that goes really well i tried the skirt on with pins and see the distance i wanted between them i think that's almost standard by now for what i like the distance between them is six centimeters when i do blouses if this was a dress for example i'd want them a little closer even at five and a half centimeters that would be two and one quarter inch but i think it's okay i made sure that the fullest part of my tummy is right there because i don't want gaping you know in this area and that's why I wanted them so close together. I've got eight. I've got a space at the bottom with no buttonhole. As usual, you need to practice them. I would never go ahead and just start sewing them on my garment before testing and seeing that I'm happy with everything. I like really snug buttonholes. <laughs> So these are really snug. I really don't like them to be that much larger than my actual button. And you can see there's just a lot of seams there. There's four pieces at the back, four pieces at the front. Each of them flares out like this, which gives you a fitted waist and hips, but then you get the best of both worlds because you get that lovely drape and volume towards the hem. Two inches shorter than the shorter version. That's how I feel comfortable. I was mindful to keep that same width of the shorter version i just brought the pattern pieces up like that i'm really happy with how the center fronts are finished hem allowance is an inch and it's all super neat i did machine it <laughs> i thought about doing it by hand but then i thought no it's fine this will be fine with the machine <laughs> this is how it looks inside i think it's really easy to see the seams because the wrong side of the fabric is so much darker than the right side so here's the button area these seams that united both front pieces these are sewn and surged together seam allowance pressed to the side but I prefer to have the side seam pressed open like that I think it just lays nicer presses flat so both are like that and also the center back seam is the same pressed open these that unite the both back pieces these are pressed towards the side seam as well and just surge together just personal preference the way I like to sew my things you know it wouldn't be incorrect to just surge them all together that, that's not incorrect I just like tweaking things like that because I know how it looks when it's pressed. I just like it. <laughs> I usually don't like the 5.8 seam allowance in patterns. Sinclair patterns usually doesn't have that large of a seam allowance. But in the pattern, you do have the option of finishing every single seam with a French seam. That's why you needed that 5.8 seam allowance. It just makes it easier for you to have the space to do the two seams required there. I didn't want to do the French seams. I didn't really think this fabric was going to benefit from it. So I just trimmed away seam allowance and just sewed like normal sew and surge. I think it's perfectly acceptable so yeah the, the seam allowance is there if you want to go the extra mile and do french seams i would save french seams for chiffon and silk that type of fabric but for a tensile twill as a regular seam was fine for me recently i made three chloe tops from sinclair patterns that have this lovely cow neckline with pleats right here super beautiful and one of those is in a rib knit in this exact same color so I've got a monochromatic look for you not common for me but I do like it and I was really happy to match up these colors I think it's really nice so let's see here is my Florence skirt this is a size 16 I used a tensile twill burgundy super beautiful I have a button placket option on the front it's one of the ways you can get into your skirt or you can put an invisible zip on a hip if you don't want to do the placket mine is two inches shorter than the shortest version that length is supposed to hit under the knee but I like my skirts above the knee you have a fitted waistband as you can see there fitted hips and then all these panels there's eight four on the front four on the back I'm gonna give it that extra flare and volume towards the hem I really love it and I love it styled here with a matching Chloe top in a rib knit really casual and comfortable outfit and now you're gonna see this styled in a way that's a little bit more adventurous <laughs>
is my same Florence skirt with a black Chloe top but this time I have matching sneakers. I do have quite a few colorful sneakers, they are comfortable but this is not a natural type of styling for me although I'm trying to experiment and incorporate this a little bit more because it is so so comfortable. So casual me, not commonly seen. You might see sneakers in my lookbooks a little bit more often. I love this skirt, it's just so 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 comfortable and the colour is everything. I didn't film any sewing for my knit version. It was so fast. It was done in under an hour, including cutting and sewing, even hand basting the hem. I chose a fabric that has elements of stripes, but they're not proper stripes, but there are some sort of diagonal features in the print. And I did that so I didn't have to match them because there are so many pieces here. But I think this print allows you to see the eight panels or gauze instead of just using any random print, then they would be lost. So I printed another skirt, no drama, they're super fast to assemble. And this one is a size 14. For my woven, I made a size 16. And this is it. <laughs> It's got super happy colors and you can see what I mean about the vertical sort of stripe features. They're not stripes, but you can sort of see how they distort into the seams right here. I think it looks really cool. Here the seams are really simple. I've just searched them. There's no sewing machine involved right there. The hem is pressed up by an inch and top stitch with a twin needle. I made my own yoga waistband and I made it four inches smaller than my waist so that it would bring it in. As with any yoga waistband, I divided it in four divided my waistline into four and just stretched the waistband to match the skirt and you don't get any gathers but it brings it all in really nicely look at all these there's so many seams but it was just so fast to sew up on the serger, just so 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 fast what i did with this one while i was cutting each piece i was already pinning it onto the piece that it went to so by the time i had finished cutting them out i had the full eight panels all pinned it was just so fast and so easy I've styled it simple, it's such a nice skirt, I'm really gonna enjoy it. Here is my Florence skirt, this time in a colourful athletic knit and to make it in a knit I used one size less, so this is a size 14. I did shorten it in the same way so it's a little shorter. The print has some vertical features that up close lets you see these seams and how they flare out. Love it with the pink accessories and this blue top. It's a skirt I'm really going to enjoy wearing. This doesn't have a button placket. I don't need a zipper because it's a knit, so I just have a stretchy yoga waistband there. Super comfy, it's just a pull-on skirt, and I really love it. It's just so, so comfortable, and in a pretty print, there's no way you can go wrong. <laughs> I'm really happy with my skirts. I love the colors, the feet, the look. You know, the style of having the fitted hips and the flare skirt means I can wear like a looser top and I, I don't feel pressured into tucking in or doing things to look a little bit more balanced. So I love it. I really like this one. I think it's classic and it's just fun to sew up all these seams. It gives you a lot of space to customize as well. So yeah, highly recommend. Remember Sinclair is running the ABC challenge and every month they post the letters that will be on sale for each month. March was E and F, that's why Florence is 20% off through the end of March, through the last day of March. I'll leave you my affiliate link down below as well. That's all from me today. I hope you found this one fun. I'll see you soon. I'll see you again very soon with more sewing. Bye.